Then I'll huff. And I'll puff. And I'll blow your house in. subscribe. <laughs> Hello everyone. This time around, I'd like to talk a little about art myths. In particular, the most common ones, such as you're gonna get better when you draw every day, or that art is a talent and not a skill, something you have to be born with and you can't just learn. In fact, we will start with that. Art is a talent and you cannot learn it by simply, well, learning it. That's a myth about art that I have seen a lot or I've heard a lot, basically over the entire course of me trying to get better at it. Even before that, I kind of heard it sometimes. Now, if so many people actually say this, doesn't it mean that there is some kind of truth behind it or that it's just outright true and not some kind of made up fact? Well, the simple answer is no, it is not true and I don't know why so many people think this way. I did a little bit of research on the World Wide Web and I couldn't really find any origin of it. So I guess it's just something like, you know, when you're really good at sports, people say you're talented at it, which, you know, might be true. You might have like the genes of a real sporty person. However, you had to train all the time to become as good as you are now, which is what a lot of people get. You know, if you're good at sports, you had to train a lot and then you're good. Now, why do so many people not think about it that way when it comes to drawing and art in general? I think it has a little bit to do with the fact that doing art or drawing is not a physically demanding task. And by all means, it's also not regarded as something that is very mentally demanding. I mean, everybody can just sit down and draw, right? And when it comes to the abstract side of art, then basically anybody can draw a red square on a white canvas. That is the thinking that leads to the belief that drawing well, of course, drawing very good, is a talent. Because of course, just like there are prodigies in sports and math and physics, there are prodigies in art too. There are people that don't need to learn as much as maybe I do or maybe you do. People that are always better than us. And not being educated on the subject itself, people mostly think that these prodigies just have the talent to do so and nothing else. And while they might have a real talent for drawing and they are very good from the get-go, they don't need to learn as much as we do, they still need to learn. They still need to keep up, which is something a lot of people don't really know. If you're good at drawing and you don't draw for half a year, I can bet that your next drawing is going to be pretty much the worst thing you've ever seen. Drawing is a skill, just like any other skill. If you train it a lot, then you're obviously going to get better at it. There are good ways to train and bad ways to train. And if you neglect your training for a long time, you will see that your proficiency will have dropped significantly. So in conclusion, art is not a talent. A good case to look at is me. I mean, I'm not a professional by any means. However, I think I'm on a pretty good way. And if you could see what I drew when I was, I don't know, 15 years old, and all that improvement of me is just after a few years of drawing. I basically started around COVID and stuff, maybe a little earlier, but I've built a pretty good proficiency in drawing in such a short time. And by all means, if I am talented, it is not at drawing. So if you are ever discouraged because somebody younger than you or, I don't know, somebody more famous than you is just plain better at drawing, just tell to yourself they have done the work that you will do in the next few years. But enough with this obviously deranged myth about drawing. Let's get to another very common one. It's about drawing every day. I've covered this a little earlier this year on the channel. However, it's a very common myth and if you haven't noticed, drawing every day is completely wrong. If you do not want to draw every day, that is. What I mean by that is if you don't like to draw for a certain amount of time, that can be a day or that can be a week, forcing yourself to draw in that time will obviously 
positively impact your drawing skills, but much more negatively impact your drawing motivation. Do it too much and you hit something called art block, which is basically burnout for artists. So simply drawing every day just to get better, even if it absolutely stresses you out, is more or less the worst advice that you can get. However, if you rearrange that advice a little, in draw as much as you possibly can, obviously considering your mental health with that, then it is about the best advice that you can get. I think that particular myth about drawing, you know, with drawing every day, has just surfaced since the internet. Since professional drawers or concept artists or illustrators have a means to share everything they do in a whole day you know, from warm-up sketches to finished illustrations, because, well, that is their job 24-7, basically, with the entire world. And with that, with people that also want to become illustrators and want to draw better. And seeing their idols draw every day, which is normal for them because that is their job, the belief surfaced that if you just draw every day, you will automatically get much better in a much shorter time, which is technically correct if we were robots that don't have feelings. But since I'm not a robot, and I'm pretty sure you're not a robot, that's just not gonna work. All right, next myth is about art styles. Your art style in particular. It's that people say, find your style by just drawing. Just try to draw anything from imagination and the style that you draw in is your style. And at first, this makes complete sense. If I draw something from my imagination, I draw it in my style. But what is my style? Or what is one of my styles? Since I can draw realism, semi-realism, or cartoonish styles, what is really my style? The answer to that is none of them are my style. They are all stolen from other people. They're not blatantly copied. However, things that I like from other people, I try to incorporate into my own art, which is exactly how you find your style. And the clue is that you have to draw to find your style, obviously. However, you don't have to draw from your imagination or anything. You have to draw studies from people that you like, from art that you like. Art styles that you think are very cool or very distinct and they could fit to your personality. Try to draw them as a study and try to draw all of them, all of the art styles that you like. After the 10th or 20th study, you're gonna notice that you're kind of mixing and mashing all the art styles, sprinkled together with some stuff that you do for yourself. And bam, you have yourself an art style, one that is cool, that you like, and incorporates even the stuff that you like from others. It's not a coincidence when artists say, I have been inspired by this and that artist. Or when an art critic says, I can see the inspiration of, I don't know, Da Vinci or whatever. That is because your art style is basically an inspiration from all the things that you find cool. Which in retrospect makes even more sense than just drawing from imagination. And since I have absolutely no idea where this came from, I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say there was just some random guy that said, well, just draw. And people picked up on it and told it to their friends. Now, the last two myths are kind of similar. So let's just pack them together for the sake of this video not hitting much more than 10 minutes. The last two myths are faster equals better and more realistic equals more art skill. The first one is easy to say where it came from. Spoiler alert, you are on the platform right now. All these speed paints and time lapses, they are the devil behind fast painting. And I don't mean that time lapses and everything are bad. It's quite the opposite. They are good. You can see the entire process just sped up into a manageable amount of time. It's the people watching them that are the bad ones. Because they think they need to put 30 minutes into a painting and it needs to look like an original Da Vinci. Which is exactly why you see a lot of people being able to draw one specific thing in 10 minutes or less. Very, very good. However, if it comes to drawing anything else, they are pretty bad. That is because they obviously trained to draw this very specific thing in the least amount of time. They understand that specific thing perfectly, but everything else is kind of hazy. And you could say that's good because they can just try to draw everything that way and one day they have learned everything there is and they're the perfect artist. However, they could have become the perfect artist about 100 years ago if they would have just learned the fundamentals of art and took their time. 
drawing faster is absolutely not better. Getting a quick sketch out fast, that's a good skill to have. However, making a finished painting in less than one hour is just not reasonable. That obviously excludes timed figure drawings or studies or whatever. And on that note, more realistic equals more art skill is also absolutely wrong. That belief obviously comes from, well, people that don't do art. The smooth brain consumers of art, so to say. They see something that has only one color and is cell shaded or whatever, and they think to themselves, well, that's not a lot of work. Just fill it in with the paint bucket tool and make a multiply layer and there you have your cell shaded shadow areas. They don't know that simplifying something is much harder than just plain copying it. And stylizing colors, shadows and shapes is much, much, much more work than just painting a realistic painting. Now, obviously, these consumers, they are not bad people because they don't know anything about art. However, there are artists that think when a consumer says, oh yes, this takes a lot of art skill, then they are right. However, an art gallery is not a restaurant. The customer is not the king. Just because people on the internet and art customers think in a specific way doesn't mean that they are right. Of course, that has nothing to do with, you know, selling your art or whatever, but the pure art skill. For example, there's a lot of people that would never ever buy, I don't know, a wooden table that costs $10,000. However, the guy that handmade that table put so much effort and skill over the years into that, that it's easily worth that amount of money. But the people think, well, it's just a table, so how hard can it be? That's about the same with art being realistic and stylized. Painting a realistic portrait, obviously, is very hard. However, painting a stylized portrait is just as hard as the realistic one. And a lot of people just don't get what kind of skills go into that. They see more details and more textures and more materials, so it obviously has to require more skills. When in reality, it just takes more time. And while we're on the subject of time, this is the spot where I have to say goodbye. And happy drawing, of course. I'll see you next time.